Okay, hello there, and welcome to uh, this edition of whatever this is, sort of a uh, from Tom's desk, bring you up to date on uh, the trip to the Illuminated Boat Procession and uh, Red Cross Fair that took place between the 12th and the 19th or it was advertised to take place between the 12th to the 19th in Nakhon Phnom. And this I've already posted a couple times. I got there, well, instead of going through things I've already posted, I guess if people went there thinking the festival went on every day between the 12th and the 19th, they would have been quite disappointed. They also would have been quite disappointed that there was no real, I mean, there's a schedule published but schedule published and reality have very had very little in common. There were no maps provided for people who uh, wanted to do fine things that were going on. The boat races that took place from the 15th through the 18th were pretty mediocre at best. If people wanted to see boat races, uh, Muktahan does a much, much better job, has much better facilities and everything else. Yes. The illuminated boat procession that takes place during the evening or took place during the evening of the 19th this year is amazing. Uh, there are no rooms available in town. There's a lot of uh, upper middle class Bangkokians and police type to come up for this thing, and they're quite rude. And the road along the river, even though it's closed, uh, you can't close it to those Thai people. And with hundreds of thousands, I don't know if I would say half a million, I don't know, some people said 300,000, some people said half a million. Uh, walking down that kilometer of road on the, uh, basically on the north side or the upriver side of the town, to have motorcycles flying through there and things like that was quite dangerous. The other thing is, I mean, the best place to watch it is watching them because they're using, they're sort of, if you're used to birdie, you know, birdie tin cans and things like that, those small tin cans, which are full kerosene and have a wick on them. There's, you know, up to 15,000 of these things on some of the, uh, some of the boats and uh, watching them lighting, you know, watching the thing coming to life. Which, which I did for the whole time there, is, is really amazing to watch, but the kerosene smoke for some people gets quite thick. And uh, if everybody tries to go in front of the Indochine market in that area and watch the thing where they stop and put on a display, uh, that's bizarre because that area is basically set up for the VIPs and the, uh, and the other, you know, whoever thinks they're a big shot. Anyhow, we're at this little park here on the road into Sekundakon, and I thought I'd stop because give you a chance to see a little bit, but if we turn over this way, I think, and if I zoom a bit, let me see here if I can zoom a bit, you should be able to watch a traffic gun on the road. Let me see the best spot. No, there's nothing really. There we go. Give you a look at traffic out on the road. Let me see if I can line this up a little better and then instead of I try to make it so you don't really have to be you could at least see something of some interest as opposed to sitting looking at me but anyhow there goes the bot bus which have kids hanging off the back uh, but anyhow I would I recommend going to knock on Phnom uh, for people to see the thing I would sooner recommend the Candle Festival in Ubon, not for the 30 days it's advertised for, but to go a few days before it and see, see them building these floats around town. And the uh, TAT office in Ubon doesn't do quite as bad a job as the one in Nakhon Phnom did with this thing. Actually, it's a pretty good office. They generally have a couple of people in there that speak English, and they generally try to provide some information. Even though the people in the in the TAT office in Nakhon Phnom were polite, they didn't know what was going on. You know, they print these things and they tell you what it says on the, the program or, or the list they have, but generally 
their landmarks or local landmarks and even they didn't know where some of them were and uh, what's what's really happening to relative to what's on the schedule is two different things so they can only do what but if you want to be there you know yeah there's there was an aisle near uh, the provincial office of OTOP of local crafts handicrafts and stuff like that but I didn't wasn't all that impressed with the prices and there's a lot of places you can go and get those things I mean look at my posts and do a search for OTOP and you're gonna find a lot of offices and places I mean between Gallison and Kan the uh, one there in Chang, uh, Chang, Chang, Chang Yuan is quite good in Gallison they're quite good in Kan Ken they're quite good <coughs> Sekunda Kun town itself has some good ones there's some great places in Nakan Phnom the Tauru uh, music factory is quite good and uh, there's a couple places in Nakan Phnom and Sekunda Kun where you can go out to the villages and see this stuff done so to go to a festival for that reason and the place is overcrowded uh, some of the places uh, really jacked up their price ridiculously and uh, no I wouldn't really recommend I mean like I said Ubon would be a better choice if you want to see boat races during the same period let's go to Muktahan. it's a nice little laid-back town the parades it's a nice handy parade I didn't because of traffic and everything else and there being three parades see the main thing at this thing is the illuminated boats and those take place the night that one night and uh, even though they do send a boat down the river every night it's the difference between 1,500 lights and 15,000 lights so uh, no, I, I wouldn't recommend knock on Panom. Ubon, yes, that's manageable. They put out a fairly decent schedule and a fairly a really good map that shows you where the watts are that are making these candles. Even though I'm not a big fan of the parade there. Because like all these big parades, what they do is, you know, they've got bands, dancing girls and all that, but they only do it at certain points along the way. The rest of the way all you do is see people walking. So, like in Ubon, you go the night before to where they have the candles all around the park in the evening when it's a bit cooler, and you can enjoy yourself. But, uh, pretty much, I, no, for Otop stuff, go to the towns and the villages, find it. For festivals, try and figure out, or go to the, the Salakrang, to the provincial office, and try to find out when things are going on in smaller villages, and enjoy yourself. But anyhow, that's a bit more than five minutes, and uh, that's enough for one day. So listen, you all enjoy yourself, take care of yourself, and uh, read isanminuslive.com. Take care. Bye.